2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ started a church with a mission to bring his teaching and his presence to the whole world, to all generations throughout human history. That is a huge mission. But look, any mission needs an institution and an organization to actually be accomplished. Any founder of any company knows this. When Bill Gates had a vision to create great software, he didn't just gather a bunch of friends and say, hey guys, go make software. He knew that the company had to have a CEO and middle management and all that stuff to actually have the mission get accomplished. Jesus Christ is at least as smart as the founder of some company. So he didn't just leave us the mission. He left us an organized church. When he gathers people to himself and before he ascended into heaven, he set 12 men, 12 apostles, as leaders of his people. And adding even further structure to his church, he placed one of those 12 apostles, Peter, in charge of them all. And Peter means rock. And he said to Peter, Peter, you are the rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And he also said, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Look, not everybody had keys 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, to have the keys meant you had the authority over the house. He gave Peter and his apostles that authority to lead and to teach his people in his name. And that, that same authority passed down to our bishops and to our pope of today. Pope Francis is the 267th successor of Saint Peter. Now why the heck would God place so much authority in the hands of sinful, frail men who could be a mess in their personal lives? Such authority to teach and to govern in His name. Because God's anointing for a specific task has never depended on our personal holiness. Throughout salvation history, we see God placing amazing tasks in the hands of people who are a mess. And you know what? The, the anointing, the authority to teach and to govern the church, it wasn't just about Peter being perfect, because he wasn't. <laughs> and it's not about the popes being perfect and all being canonizable saints, because they weren't. The authority that we find in the Catholic Church to teach us in Jesus Christ's name, it's a gift to all of us. See, he knew that throughout the millennia, we'd encounter a whole lot of issues where we wouldn't know how to interpret the Word of God properly or apply it to a certain situation and be wondering, what does God want here? He didn't want us to stumble around in the darkness. He wanted us to walk with surety toward his kingdom, to walk in the light of life. So he gave us that gift of an authoritative teacher in his name that we could place our feet firmly upon that rock. He also gave us that gift because he wanted his people to be one. And he knew that when it comes to difficult teachings, we didn't know how to interpret the word of God, that every time there was a disagreement, we'd have a church fragmenting off and starting another church. He didn't want that. He wanted us to be one so badly that his last prayer recorded in the Gospel of John was, Father, let them be one as you and I are one. Because he knew that we'd have to be one in order to get his mission done. So Jesus Christ left us an organized religion. Despite all the frailty, all the messiness you encounter in any human organization, because he knew that the only alternative is this organized religion.